All right, hello and welcome to Greed Ninjas episode four. We got Metallicat two hundred six and uh, Wavy P, Wavy P in the building. we we decided the topic of the day for today is going to be MOBAs, the ultra greed approach to MOBAs, and uh, you know a couple of other things just around multiplayer online battle arenas and our takes on them. All right, uh, yeah, man, and I, I guess start this off real quick. It's like we're just gonna kind of get into. Uh, when you're playing a character, how to get the most out of that character? Because one of the things that kind of like spurred that on was like, we we were having this conversation about one trick ponies, but then rather than one trick ponies, I guess like uh, Metallica brought to my attention more. So it's like a person plays only one character that makes him a one trick pony. So rather than calling a character one trick pony, it's like how you play your character to try to get the most out of their kit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. Because the only true one-trick pony that I would say that I found in the game mm -hmm. is the character I play, Hino. And that's literally only because he only has one ability that actually does damage. Because he has, he has three abilities. <clears throat> he has his ultimate, which reverses time and sends him back to the last recall point from where he teleported. His teleport is his second ability. That is a little bit has a little bit of depth to it because when you teleport into melee range of an enemy, it changes... His first ability, which is a ranged spear attack, into a melee kind of uh, it turns it in, it turns him into a basic his basic attack into a melee, and it makes it so that his number one attack now tosses his staff and spins it around and does damage over a shorter area, okay. but it heals him and it gives him extra health. He gives an extra health cap and he he heals from dealing damage with it. And then my thing was, I think with that, it's uh, that's just getting the most out of your. Well, I wouldn't say getting the most out of anything yet, but with a character like Hino, I wouldn't necessarily call him a one trick pony, is because like I feel like that's just what Hino does, you know? Like he teleports. Also, a part of that ultimate, like if he's at a high ground tower, if he's his ultimate next to it, he can bring it back. But uh, like there's another character, Angela, where she has like uh, her first ability, she throws out these orbs that does damage. Her second ability is like this stun if it makes contact, and then a slow thereafter. And then her third ability is like this laser beam, you know what I'm saying? And it does a lot of damage. Now, it's like each character in the game, to a degree, has like a combo that they can pull off to maximize their damage on their abilities. And that's more so like why I was referring to certain characters as one trick ponies. But like, nah, that's just what certain characters do. Like when Angela's in your face, she just shits a lot of magic damage at you, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like if Dion Wei's in your face. He's going to hit you with a whole bunch of physical attack damage and some true damage, and you're just going to get deleted. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, 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 what I've noticed is, like, whereas Dion Way, when he jumps into a fight, for example, he has to fully commit. We're talking about Heroes of the... Honor of Kings, by the way. He's yeah, the Honor, of Honor of the Kings. But Dion Way, he has to fully commit to a fight, and it's like, he can't just walk away because he doesn't have very many escape options. Musashi, for example, can ult into a fight, dash into a fight, use some abilities and fight for a little bit, then dash out, you know what I'm saying? He has an escape ability, you know what I mean? So I guess it's like when you're playing a character, understanding what that character does, and then not only understanding what they do, but then how to apply that in the game properly. And what spurred this conversation on really is like, we played with the fucking trash, Dion Way. You know, Metallica said he was pretty decent. I didn't think he was too good. I didn't say he was decent. I didn't say he was decent. Well, he took some objectives. I just, yeah, I just said he, I, you asked me, did he take objectives? And I said, yeah, he took objectives. Okay, he took objectives, but he was garbage. He went like 08 and 3 or something like that. And I was just wondering, like, how you could play a character so badly. And it's like, I've played characters bad before, so it's not like I'm sitting here trying to comment negatively, but like, the other way is like, nah, but this wasn't like, this wasn't like, it was, uh, our, our, our loadouts or our, like, it wasn't like they picked out, picked us, right? Where they beat us from, from the pick, right? from the character select screen mm -hmm. it wasn't like oh we're just getting mopped up it was it was things like he is taking engagements where if you can read the map it's clear he'll take a fight close to their jungle near their mid lane when their fighter lane is missing yeah from on that side on the side of the fighter lane when the fighter lane is missing you're in fighter lane wavy p is in fighter lane pushed up so we know that their fighter is not in lane I'm a little bit pushed up in my lane, and I can see that Angela, our mid lane person, is toward the right side of the turret towards the farm lane, right? Yeah. And I can see that where he's going into, clearly, he's about to enter into the jungle chasing down their jungler. Knowing but you, that know, Angela and the top laner, if you have just a wee bit of awareness, are probably crashing are down. Are probably right crashing down. Yeah, and like in a mobile game, bro, it's like an 85% to 90% chance that they are. And he chased them from river. 
He was chasing yeah. him from River. That's why I turned around. And I was like, I'm not helping him with that shit. Because I was like, yeah. I, I was like, I, if I was there five seconds earlier, that was a fight. That's a fight I said he could have won. But then I'm over thinking to myself like, dog, I'm supposed to be my lane fucking farming. Yeah. I'm not gonna waste my time trying to help this dude every two seconds. And it's like, and I'm knowing what happened now. Like now that I'm thinking about it, I think he was playing tilted. Right? Because he's playing the character where he's like, I know I can get this kill. I almost got this kill last time. Mm -hmm. I almost got this kill that time. Nah, what you gotta do in those situations is regroup. Because it's not about your character being bad. And even if you know you can get that kill, next time just go in for that kill with your team. Play safe and get your your uh, get your get your your lead back because Deontay is so strong in the first ten minutes of the game. Probably the strongest character in the first ten minutes. Probably with the exception of like Augrin in like jungle. And even then, I've seen Augrin get his ass. Well, Augrin Augrin's the best jungle invader though. He's the best jungle invader, but I think in that first ten minutes, Deontay like beats him really bad before he gets items. And it's just before he gets items. I don't know, man. Here's why Deontay beats him: true damage. That execute only matters if you get him to sixty percent. And D.I. Wade does his true damage plus stacking that healing. Like, it's hard. To, it's, he's so hard to 1v1. Like, I don't know anybody that beats him in a 1v1, to be honest with you, outside of ADCs. But that's the thing, right? As D.I. <coughs> Wade's trying to chase him, Augur has a little bit of that basic attack from the swipe that gets the extended little, um, mm -hmm. like, laser beam onto you. Mm -hmm. That's if you're in range. Mm -hmm. That adds up if you can't reach him. And if you can be chasing him. and Like, D.I. Wade does have his rush down, but early in the game... That all he needs is the swipe and the fucking laser beam to really kill you. I'm a I I see my lane I'm, I I and I haven't been in jungle in a minute, but my jungle main is still I'd say because I've been bouncing around the last few times I played. I, I've been on um, Dharma, Mister Puncherson. You like to call mm -hmm. him Mr. Punchy Puncherson? Yeah, One Punch Man. I've been the same say skin looks like One Punch Man. It does. I've been on Lay, but I was only on Lay to like flex the Bruce Lee skin. And I don't really oh pay use, pay. Yeah, I don't yeah. even use pay, but I was flexing Bruce Lee skin. Yeah, pays. Day. 50, 50. And I'm so mad they gave Sometimes he gets picked by pros, but every pro I've seen pick him gets fucking bodied. Yeah, Bay's not really that good. He's not really relevant. Um, Lou Bay's one of my favorite characters, but like, in all honesty, he's very underwhelming in comparison to some, partially because he's a marksman in the jungle. So it's like, he has that, like, I like all junglers or any character really that has the ability to just like summon a shitload of fucking armor just because. I like, like Kaiser. I like Kaiser too. You know who Kaiser reminds me of? Like, you ever played with uh, Set and Smite? No, I never played Smite. I played a little bit of Smite, but I don't yeah. know it like that. So, Kaiser, okay, so Set does, so Set actually, instead of having the, okay, Set in League even. You know how Set in League, he has that ability where he can enhance an attack, he summons that circle, then he has something that, like, extends his health, and his ultimate gives him, like, this ultra form or whatever. He does bonus damage, and then he takes less damage in this form and shit like that. Moves a little bit faster. You know what I'm talking about? Who are you talking about? The, the, the Anubis-looking nigga in League. Set. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't know him. Well, essentially, all I'm saying is Kaiser is, like, a fixed version of Set, where it's like, he has his life steal off of his ring. And I say Kaiser is what you would consider a complete character. You get what I'm saying? And what, what I mean by that is... He has something for everything. Well, he has damage, yeah. chase down, uh, and survivability. And survivability, yeah. And for top lane, you don't necessarily need the chase down as much, but you can use it as an escape and the survivability through the range of his first ability and the survivability through his ultimate. Like, that's perfect. And then jungle, like, you can't ask for much more, really. You know what I'm saying? Because most junglers only have damage plus damage and then potentially maybe a chase down. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas, and then like, somebody I want to pick up that I've been realizing is actually a lot better than they look is Fane. I used to have so much disrespect for this character as a character. May I pause you? Yeah. Because you were talking about characters that add armor for shit. Mm -hmm. One thing that I really like, especially from Heroes of the Storm, they had characters, the specific character I'm talking about is Artanis, where his whole thing was, he's a tank, right? Mm -hmm. And his whole thing was to play... At below fifty at fifty percent health or below, right? Because you could you had abilities that would give you shield, right? That would scale based off on percentage of health being gone. Not based on percentage of health of health missing. It's just that it would give. It's like it gave you more health without giving you more health. It gave you a da it was a damage barrier, right? Kind of like Atta. It's like people call it white health because the health was white. Kind of like Atta. Uh, yeah, kind of like kind of like Atta. Yeah, Words but like. His, his armor can stack on top of the white health, and then the white, the white health ends up being, like, not necessarily emulsified health, but it's, like, some sort of damage reduction barrier, so he doesn't take the full amount of damage. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
But this one, this one literally is one for one HP. So mm-hmm. like the damage that gets done to the shield it would be damage that you would t- be taking your HP. But it, instead of your HP being at full, so it's like this cool thing where you can get like up to like seventy five percent or more of your health because you have shield, but you're at fifty percent or below. So there's like this cool game of like you play with your healer of getting healed up to a certain percent while keeping all your bonuses and getting your your shield timing for your shield to be popping uh, to be able to like infinitely like take damage and be able to he does more you can do stuff where he does more damage where he when he's at fifty percent below health yeah. and he's a brawler that has um, a move that projects out and switches position mm-hmm. if it hits you it switches your position and his position mm-hmm. so then you can really like. Take more damage while also like making the most out of your armor and then putting them in danger. Yeah, and putting them in danger. So you typically switch a straggler on their team mm-hmm. into a position that where they're surrounded by your team. They get blown up and then you try to do more of the same. And you have like these reactive blades that you have to that make your basic attack better. Mm-hmm. It's not a passive. You have to like charge it. You have to press the button to prepare it. Yeah. So every time you want to do it, you have to press it. And then it's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it empowers your basic attacks, and then there's little, um, there were feats and stuff or. What do they call them? The the things you get as you level up in the in the game. Instead of, and here's the storm. Instead of getting a purchase window, you just get three options or so that you can choose from as you Kinda get like. Well, at level at level four, at level seven, at level ten. 13, 15, The, the talent system, right? Yeah, it was a talent system that was called. Mm-hmm. It was talents. You got to choose from talents um, as you leveled, and it was a choice of between three. So there were like general builds that you could go with, and like. No, I feel like that's the direction most MOBAs should go in. No, I like I because I like that a the, lot for MOBAs. Here's the thing: the only reason they have the store is because of the because of the gold from the holdover of its origin. Like it's not necessary. Like I do like I like the team leveling aspect because it makes it more of a team game, and then um, the talent system just makes it so that the builds are much cleaner. And I like you can have dev you can have developer intent for stuff be more clear. As opposed to when you have, like, just an item shop, it's like, well, how do I build? Is it even, is it is it necessarily crazy for me? Like, obviously, it's crazy for you to go with I, I physical think, on Hino. Yeah. But technically, you could build physical damage on them. You, you can build anything on anybody. And here's what I don't like about it. It's the fact that, like, what ends up happening is, like, everybody that plays kind of similar ends up having, like, a watered-down version of the same build. You get what I'm saying? Where it's like, okay, I'm playing a character that has this tank and has tank damage. Okay, then he's going to have a... No, well, what it makes it, what it actually you know? makes for it is, it's not that there's a watered down build, it's just there is the best build. No, but the best build on this character being so similar to another character because of the items. And that becomes oh, because so, of the items, yeah, That yeah, becomes yeah, more yeah. so, okay, whoever's good with skills versus, like, okay, the metagame actually, or because, like, and HOK, it's rare that I'm like, yo, guys, we need to counter build. Like, it's only if we're really getting blown up that I'm like, yo, it's counter build here. You but even then, but even then, but even of. then, most of the time... Like, even with the pros, like, they rarely even think about going counter build because oftentimes the best, the reason why your best build is the best build, like, if, uh, uh, like, they don't have enough low tier items, right, that give you uh, armor pierce or fizz pen or, uh, like, fizz pen or magic penetration, right? Most of those are already full built items, right? If you read any of the items... Most of the pen and stuff comes from the full built items, right? Mm-hmm. So even with somebody's built armor against you, the shit you're stuck with is I have to just build my, the, my pen item earlier, not mm-hmm. like I have to build more pen. Do you get what I'm saying? See, this is why I like the the, the, the building system in like League or even Vainglory, for example. And I'm the most no, because there are actual counter builds because you can look at somebody's and build. you're like they got this. I need to get this. I need item to get this to other item. Not only this item that they have, but to counter this character. And that's also where the talent system comes in, right? Because I feel like the talent system, like when you allow versatility, like okay, this uh, you can potentially build either this version of this ability, this version of this ability, or this version of this ability. It allows the opposing team to be like, okay, during the next talent pick, I can do something to potentially counterpick. No, that's really why build. there were <clears throat> even levels to this shit. That's what I'm saying to your to your point. Like with the talent system, you have different builds that account for different approaches to the character, right? Yeah. And when you build talents like that, it means that. Sometimes, right, you have one build, which is just, this is the damage build. Most people are going to build this because it doesn't take anything or thinking to build it. But, oftentimes, you might want to build a control build or this other build because damage, more damage isn't going to get you there where you need. 
You need more control, or maybe right? more survivability potentially. And and if you don't if you don't have talents really, mm -hmm. right? Like this is also a problem I have with league. It's gonna go to the same items thing. The counter builds still become kind of the same. I think right? I, I think with a game like HOK, I think it's a scaling issue on how much they have the items do as far as damage and enhancing characters and their abilities. Because something like, for example, we go to Vainglory, and I think of that if. if the enemy team has a lead because you've been playing bad. It's because it's an earned lead. So you have to really, like, you know what I'm saying, counterplay in order mm -hmm. to get back into the game. Whereas in this game, like, okay, if you get ahead with a good character, it's your fault if you lose, kind of similarly. But it doesn't offer that, that meta of counter-picking items in order to kind of even the playing field earlier on. Like, let's say you build that defense a little bit earlier. Well, they're so far ahead, they can just continue to build their damage items that are going towards their build, to shoot, like, just to shut you down. No, but, like... There's, there's not enough, in my opinion... There's not enough counter-built items available in the game that allow you to even really survive half the shit that some of these characters do. What you're, what you're really talking about is there's not really that many items to build. And then it really just comes down to skill. Plus, it, this game's more so about team and composition than it is about individual skill and individual build on character. Whereas in Vayne, it, bro, everybody's build matters. If our support doesn't have support items you're going to lose. Because when the enemy team is Atlas Pauldron, Atlas Pauldron is an, attack, is an ability on an item that basically reduces uh, anybody affected by it in the range of it, their attack speed by 95% for like two, three seconds, mm -hmm. right? So if your team gets Atlas Pauldron and your support doesn't have a Crucible to protect that, a Crucible gives you shield and it protects against CC effects. No, but the enemy. have you even, have you even <clears throat> looked at the... Because we, we always look at the end build items, but have you looked at the the... Items that build these items and what they give. Yes, they only give like plus fifteen attack or the, plus, plus fifteen defense. And it's like none of them give. None of them give like none of them give pen. None, none of them, of them give, have anything like, like to uh, boost your passive magic defense. Yeah, by yeah, this yeah. Or exactly. Like none yeah. of that shit. And I feel like if you had stuff like that, all you have to do is do something where you don't allow passives to stack, so that if somebody did try to abuse the game and build a whole bunch of those early game before they. But that. But I'm saying. Game. But I'm saying. <laughs> But I'm saying there's there's not a lot of there's not a lot of play to their system overall, right? Yeah. Like, like honestly, even the there are some variations. Like, with the people that can play multiple roles, they have the most variation, and not even just with the builds in between their roles. Mm. But like, if you want to build like Li, like Liang, for example, there's a couple of different ways to build him. That can make them effective in different ways because and at different stages in the game too, huh? Yeah, because there's there's ways you can build them where he's tankier and can survive more, and there's ways you can build him where he does more damage. So like every hit from one of his skills does percentage damage, so he does more damage over time mm -hmm. type shit. And then I'm assuming there's a way you can build him to make the whole team more survivable as well through his abilities, making them like shorten the cooldowns and allowing him to go ahead and get his walls up. And doesn't he do something where he buffs the team through something as well? He doesn't buff the team, though. He doesn't? Okay. Yeah. It's just those walls and then... It's just the walls and he has a time. suppress ultimate. Okay. Because it's like, what the game ends up becoming is releasing a character to balance this character, but then everybody just picks the good character. Rather than like... Like, what this game should have is an update where they introduce a whole bunch of new items. And then a couple new basic items, too. Or, you know, you know, blow this game up and then build a new one in a few years like they did with the last one. Because they went from Arena of Valor into Honor of Kings, which I didn't even know fucking existed. And then Arena of Valor was out at the same time. And then, like, all of a sudden it's dead, you know? Uh, Arena of Valor, yeah, yeah. yeah HOK okay, were originally released in China. So it was always known as HOK in the Arena of Valor version. No, I think the Arena of Valor... Arena Valor got turned into HOK, but, like, it released earlier in China. All the stuff in China comes up first. So it was already HOK? But no, because, look, Arena of Valor, that version of the game, had all the DC characters. Yeah. So did the HOK version have all the DC characters as no. well? No. So, and that's how they kept their original. Because I'm assuming they saw something in the future happening where, like, you know, they lose licenses to characters. And then they just kind of, like, converted the whole American audience to this. Because it's the exact same game, minus some characters. For example, Manganga is just Doctor Doctor Beyond. I like Manganga more. I, was I do too. The fucking Maganga, yeah. bro and Manganga like seemed like he was good too. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, we got interrupted by a little quick phone call. Shit but happens, yeah, shit happens. The, yeah, the, the game. The, I like the Arena of Valor. I love no, Manganga. You know why I got mad that it got reset, dog? 
I had just now got enough of the shit to, so I already had Joker. I was playing Superman. Bro, I, I had I just was, got I the fucking the Flash. I was the man of steel, just walking up on people, beating them up. You know who was good as fuck? Wonder Woman. Nah, Batman was the ultimate nigga. Because he was a good jungler. Mm-hmm. And then, you know who Batman played like? Prince of Land Lee. Because when Batman would disappear with his cloak, all you'd see is that bat symbol pop yeah, up. Yeah, and yeah. then you could hop on niggas. Only difference is Batman had the Batarang, which is ranged. Yeah. Land Ling doesn't have any ranged abilities. He has... Oh, <laughs> that's just a shadow kick. No, it's not and right. he also has a stun through it. But he also has kind of like Loki, the same ult where it dashes to you and stuns you and shit. Mm-hmm. But uh, I feel like I feel like Batman got broken into two different characters. He got broken into Lamb and he got broken into Land Ling. No. La- Lamb was... Uh, you know what happens? Man, we, you know what I just realized, though? We're yeah. really far afield. We didn't even tell these people what the ultra-aggressive, ultra, ultra aggressive, ultra-greedy way to play is. The ultra-greedy, ultra-aggressive way we to just, play. We, we went, Take it away. Put the cart before the horse. Look, Take it away. So, at least, the the best summation of the ultra-greed aspect of way to play, like, when we were really popping, was in Heroes of the Storm. Mm-hmm. And the best aggressive, ultra-aggressive, ultra-greedy play was the five-man mid-Southeast Asian meta. Mm. Right? Five man, go mid, team fight, brawl out for glory, and then separate in the lanes, mm. and then but and then you know get your lane, get your advantage, and come back for team fight, take camps and there shit. Was, there was something but similar. But nah, it was it, we were all up. It was it was so much heat immediately. But that same thing, mm-hmm. you got to bring that same shit to lane. Like when I play Hino, especially since I know my regular ability mm-hmm. is so much stronger than your first ability, no matter what you chose. Yeah, I'm so. better than you because you don't have a full kit right now. Yeah. I'm basically full kit, no teleport, no whatever, but like, what do I need more than this? So I'll be testing people. Like Same thing with, if I pick this, same thing with Loki with Dharma, because like in Vainglory, there was a uh, Glaive who had Rocket Axe, and I talk about Glaive all the time, one of my favorite characters. And he had that like dash in, push out ultimate. And mm-hmm. I feel like with Dharma, it would be probably like a nice little comp we could put together because Dharma has his dashes, but then he also has the rocket punches. So you probably wouldn't be able to do it to level four because uh, Glaze Rocket Axe was like his first ability, but it took like 75% of his mana early game. Mm-hmm. So he'd be able to dash through a target and push him out, and then the push would stun them. And then your team could jump on them immediately. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But more ways to kind of like. The thing is, the reason why the five lane man mid lane Korean doesn't work in this game is because that turret's range. And then it punishes like that. True damage turret does. So, like, yeah, there's no room. There's no room for the five man mid in this game. Not at all. The only yeah. way you could really five man invade is through jungle. And if yeah. you jungle invade, then the whole team has to make sure they take the clear out the enemy's jungle. Nah, no, what what's really close to that five man mid is when you have. So this is one of the team comps that was really crazy. You go with um, Maiden. You go with uh, Princess Frost mid. You go with uh, Lu Ban ADC, mm-hmm. and you go with the teleport chick. Um, Are we? No, the teleport chick that teleports the whole team. Yeah. You you has the support, right? And then what you do is you push two lanes with Lu Ban and the support. And you or push one lane with two people, the Lu Ban and the support. And then you push another lane with three people uh, using Princess Frost, your tank, and the jungler, mm-hmm. right? And they have to make a choice. And then they have to make a choice. And they're going to be losing at either one. Mm-hmm. And then whenever they try to show up at one or somebody shows up at one mm-hmm. and you know they're at the other one with the three, call in the full man team, teleport, kill everybody around that tower, take the tower, and then mm-hmm. keep doing that all game. But that's a, that's a team comp that works because of that character. And I don't think we know anybody. Well, because of that character, character and because Lou Band and Princess Frost both have their fucking pieces. their ultimates. Oh, like, the big ass circles. The big ass circles that make it so you, there's just a whole area you can't contest while they just fuck up your turret. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah, because that Princess False Frost ultimate really fucks you up during team fights under turret. Like when yeah. uh, you're assaulting, you got Princess Frost on your team, and she throws that ult under mm-hmm. their tower. Like you, everybody's just taking damage. And then also, all she has to do is uh, retake her aggro by stepping under turret, moving out, stepping under, moving out while, yeah. while it's active, so that anybody who's attacking doesn't. No, that's aggro. the that's the most disrespect I've ever seen for a turret is when people have Princess Frost, that teleport chick. And Lu Ban, they just and sit there. Run a Lushan with a uh, disrupt on his, as his ability on a turret, so you can just disrupt tower when you guys are diving. Yeah, with disrupt. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. That's lethal. That's, that's disgusting, actually. Thinking about it, we have a team that we 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 have. I got pushed in by it in a fucking we, grandmaster we or in a master match. We have a coordination that can run it. CJ can run Lu Ban. You can run Princess Frost, and then I could be. I could probably run support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could probably try it. Or who would you say the third was for that? Lu Ban. Princess Frost, and who's the third man? The support. The teleport support. Yeah, I'll, I'll start learning her. I'll start learning her. 
Because her ultimate is also in a circle, so she could just put her ultimate under wherever her ult is, regardless as well. Yeah. As Frost. No, I just, I just, I saw a team do that to us, and I was just like, there's yeah, there's nothing we can shit. do about this. They're like, no matter what we commit to, if we put five people over here, they're gonna put five people over there. If they put, if we put four people over here, they're gonna put five people over there. If we split it up, they're just gonna split, and whichever one's winning, they're just gonna keep pushing. The only way you counter that is with like a five man one lane push. Yeah. And even then, it's like okay, the split push is probably. Or or you have a or you or you somehow win a four v five and you have a hero push. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You have the four v five where you shouldn't be winning because they have the Luban Alt and the Princess Frost and the fucking chick that teleports everybody there. Let's just throwing it damn way for good measure. That's too much AOE though. Yeah. That's too much, guys. Because even the chick that does that teleport shit. Fuck it, throwing. You know that you know that jungler that has the cannon that shoots far, where you can go in the fucking. He's ADC. He's ADC. Mm -hmm. The one that has the fucking turret mode? Mm -hmm. like ADC. Oh, then fucking... Uh, you know you should run with that? I, I swear I've seen people run him in jungle. You know, you, you know who will go good with that, though? Who? Fang. Ah, uh, Fang? I don't like Fang at all. I know you don't like Fang, but Fang got a rework, and he's actually low-key better because he got buffs to his abilities. That's also why I wanted to pick up uh, Leanne Powell, the other... Uh, the, or Leanne Powell? Yeah, the uh, tank nigga that gives a huge shield. He, yeah. got, he got buffs to his abilities, too. He got buffs to his abilities last patch, and he got buffs to his abilities this patch. Yeah, I've seen people use him pretty okay. Like, he's, they, it's like they're trying to... They're, he was already decent. They're trying to make him, like, way better. They also buffed... He gives teammate shield, too, right? Teammate shield, his yeah. ultimate. They buffed it, the second and third punch on it. And then they also buffed the range on it. And then I think they buffed his basic attack damage, too, again. Nice. So it's like, he's he's he's, he's probably going to be really relevant soon. Those buffs nah, cause a lot. They're, like, like I said, especially when I get into my tanky parts of my build as Hino... A lot of these people that you're mentioning, especially early in the game, are just like ignore, like fucking damn way. Especially early in the way early, like see, I'm talking about early seasons ago, mm -hmm. like or a season ago, like people like playing against damn ways. I never had respect. I'm just like, I'm gonna stand here and eat your damage. You like, you're gonna what's who's that guy that puts up that fucking chain uh, area ult? Talking about Lubu. Lu 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 no, you're talking about uh, Lubu. Lubu. Yeah. In yeah. Circle. Yeah, with the circle. Yeah. Another character you can have for that comp. You call it big circles. Yeah. You can have like, cause like all it is is stacking the ultimates because nobody's surviving that shit. Yeah. That yeah. But like him, even him, like as I know, especially a few times, like people would ult on me, and I'm I'm at fucking life steal build, and I'm over here just being like, your shit ain't doing shit. I'm gonna stand here and man up on you, go into fucking uh uh physical mode. And throw my shit and gain a bunch of health and a bunch of health and a bunch of health and like I feel like you are shit. Mm -hmm. There's so many there's so many like different people. That's that's why I, have, I don't have a great opinion of so many heroes. I'm like I've shitted on these heroes so many times. Mm -hmm. Like the first time I ever saw a damn way really like start eating the team, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Does my team suck? Is he good? What's and, happening? And all of a sudden you realize Dion Way is just low key good. And, and, and he's decent, but like I said, <clears throat> as high know. Because he's an S rank nigga, like you just don't be respecting a lot of niggas. I feel like because okay, another because I'm thinking of comps with abilities right now, right? And like another comp you could use is like deal of damage over time comp, where it's like okay, you get hit with this team's anything since all these niggas are stacking damage over time. Like you're probably gonna die if you get hit with shit, right? And you can go with like that one mage that levels niggas up to twenty five. Yeah. yeah, you can go him. You go Dr. BN because he poisons. But Dr. BN's mid lane too. Yeah, I know. But like, you, they, they can interchange because both of them can run uh, mid lane or support. And then you can go Fang, who can either run ADC or jungle. And then uh, who else does damage over time? Um, those are the three I'm thinking of off the top of my head that do damage over time. Uh, and that'd be a pretty decent comp. Because I've seen Fangs play with the Dr. BN and niggas die. Because it's like, okay, you have Dr. BN poisoning you, and then Fang has the guaranteed damage amount when you get hit with certain mm -hmm. shit, too. You know what I'm saying? And since they buff the damage on that, as long as you get your three or four attacks with Fang, like, you're good. That's also what makes him bad. In I've this never game, been worried about Fang. I'm never, I'm never worried about him either. Because, like, the reason why, like, the whole thing with Fang's case. Like he is, doesn't have more range than Hino, and oftentimes I just be hitting when they don't hit me. Well, no, here's what I'm saying. With Fang, a character like him is trash in a game like this is because of the auto attack system and the way it works. Fang gets rewarded from hitting the same character over more than once. Mm -hmm. Nigga, if I just have somebody walk in your attack bubble with me, the computers are confused on who to attack. So if you're not really frequent with the auto-locking and shit mm -hmm. like that, you're not going to hit who you want to hit, which 
I'm gonna be so real. The auto lock system, or at least the character frame lock, the way they have it work, it's so unnatural. It just, it just doesn't make any sense because the way it, characters pop up, they don't come up in a specific frame where you know who's gonna pop up where. It's always switching super fast, so you never know who you're really on. And then when you do lock on someone, your game acts retarded and just walks you out of wherever the fuck you're walking to make sure it can hit them with whatever it's trying to hit them with. So that's why a character like things. That's why I just try to position whoever I'm trying to hit. I try to position so that it's like. They're the only nigga on my shit. What I do is I try to position myself, especially if he's a ranked character, I try to position myself in a way where it's like if there's one person I'm trying to hit, I try to hit them. But if I'm hitting with the skill attack, okay, I just, I've gotten used to using the bubble for the skill attack. But then outside of that, I, I try to do it to where it's like whoever's in my range just gets punished for being there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's, cause I don't like walking in too deep and then hitting like three or four different niggas. Like, reason why another character like Hino is not Hino. Ho Yi is so good because he can just enhance. I'm hitting everybody over here now with yeah. my basic attack. Whereas anybody else, it's like, okay, Lu, Lu Ban, he's good because, okay, you're caught in my attack stream and I got fast attack speed. Now I'm hitting everyone instead of me having to focus somebody out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's how those characters went out in comparison to other characters because most ADCs, even, for example, they have to focus one character. Like, I feel like Angela, she's good. Her beam can hit out a whole bunch of niggas and it does damage like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, who else does damage like that? I feel like characters that do damage immediately and to a lot of characters immediately are meta characters. You know what I'm saying? Like, in Well, that's what people are looking for. Immediate yeah. damage. Yeah. Like, if you have to wait for your damage, it's just not as good. No, no, no. But not even like... Oh, oh, no, no I'm, saying, I'm saying I'm saying, the sense of like... But literally, whether it's... they Whether whether or not it's something like... I know having to mark somebody and then throw a thing. Mm -hmm. But his mark... the It's S tier because his fucking spear penetrates everybody. Hits everything. So you can mark as many people get hit. Plus the fucking turret. <clears throat> like, you bring back a turret, though. And I can bring back a turret. And does but, the turret heal? But, like, with a dot like um, Fangs, right... The problem is, while the while you're not while your damage hasn't cashed in, they're still fucking attacking you. They yep. have more cooldowns than yep. you spend. And it's like you gotta hope that you're. So it's like with Fang, he's another character where it's like if you don't get off early with him. The only time I've seen it said Fang's successful if he gets like a lucky break. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think Fang is. I don't know how many other characters are like that because I don't really play too many characters like that. But Fang is a, uh, probably like Simi Yi. I haven't seen Simi Yi played in four fucking ever. And I don't know if it's because that character's so hard to play good, or if it's because that character's fucking trash. Because like I came into a game where somebody's playing really good, but like I've never seen a pick high tier. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey. so question: When does a character become just trash versus a skill issue with a person? Because one of my things is like I like using dark horse picks, so I'm always trying to find out what the next meta thing is. But then like sometimes shit is just shit. Fang, for example, like they buffed him, and I want to try him, but I'm still expecting him to be garbage. I mean, it comes down to what can their kit do. Like, part of why Hino is S tier is he has he has ultra survivability. He has a dash, a multi hit. Uh, he has a multi hit uh, main attack with range. Mm -hmm. He has life gain from the change. Uh, he has life gain in his kit from when you change the physical with his uh, attack one, mm -hmm. and he has a full life bar reset if you have full life when you. Do the teleport. It's mm -hmm. so like if you if you do his ultimate and you when the when you teleport it if you had full life, it'll set you back to how much life you had when you teleport. Mm -hmm. So like you have two life bars, having two life bars alone makes uh, characters S tier. Okay. Because it means no matter what I have, it's you twice as good. With more. Yeah, and that's why yeah. you're able to tank up so much damage. You can yeah. tank it out, come back in, and finish yeah. the fight off. So you're low key a mid. Like, you're low key a tank slash engager at the same time too. Yeah. yeah. That's why you can play Hino technically in. Uh, Clash lane, lane yeah. yeah. You just don't... It's, it's fucked up to play him in Clash lane because yeah, you can't even match. It's not fair. It's not fair. He yeah. has range. And then it's magic range, too. Yeah. And then it's like, all he has to do is fucking build physical defense early instead of fucking magic defense now. And now it's like, okay, the, the light... The lane no, you still just build cooldown and magic damage. No, no, but don't you still, for your, for your like, your survival items, what do you build? You don't build survival items? No, you build it the same way you... You still... You build it the same way you build mid. Hmm. It's just you have to you have to be tanky by surviving shit and mm -hmm. being smart with how you teleport. Like you have peel because you can get into an engagement, take a few uh, cooldowns of their attacks, and then peel out to the side by teleporting and not getting caught, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you also have I can go in, initiate an engage, do my ultimate, come back and deal more damage mm -hmm. and fucking survive. Mm -hmm. 
Like, he's not really tanky until he gets it, like, his mid to late game items built. He needs lifesteal. So you would build the lifesteal earlier, probably. And that's about it? That's, that's only difference you it, make? Yeah. Okay. Because you've seen me in mid game just start tanking shit. Yeah, and then it'll be like, yeah, like you get all the uh, tank fight, team fight accolades and shit like yeah. that, where it's like team fight tank, 4.3k damage taken or yeah. something stupid like that. Yeah. And the damage in this game, like, that 4.3k is, is kind of a lot early game, you know what I'm saying? But, um... Back to the ultra greedy, ultra aggressive playstyle. Well, another thing I wanted to talk about in regards to that is like, pretty much like, don't play scared. You right. You know what I'm saying? Because there's like engagements all the time I see online where it's like, you you'll have a teammate waste your effort. Where it's like I could have got gold and assist and XP off of an assist if he just wanted to like get one more attack in. You right. Know what I'm saying, and like it used to be an issue in our group early on, but now it's like we make the most out of it. I think it's like more so we run into people who like play kind of fucking scary, mm -hmm. and it's like even in fights where you're fighting against somebody that's been losing fights, people don't realize now that that person has a bounty. If they're about to die, you kill them so we can get the fucking bounty, so we can get back in the game faster. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like when you kill, I think I probably prioritize trying to fucking kill somebody five zero and three or something crazy. Yeah. It's like, bruh, we're about to cash in on that and then get our gold. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like. It's better if the whole team shares the XP and the gold off killing this nigga than one or two people getting it. Or, like, you know, because that... I don't know what the timing is for an assist or you getting the assist. I think it might be, like, from time that you engage and this person takes damage versus when they disengage and take damage. Because what I've seen is, like, if a fight goes for 30 seconds, and if you started the fight, even if you die halfway through, mm -hmm. like you'll still get your assist versus, like... Okay, he ducked out of the fight for like a second or two, then came back, and because he had that second or two where he didn't take damage, or at least you weren't on that damage total, now, okay, boom, whoever's reattacking him now, they get that assist or that mm -hmm. kill, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is one of the things that irks me the most, because I'd be like, damn, if niggas would have got here probably a second earlier, I'd probably get the assist on certain things. Sometimes it's okay to just have a nigga dead, but then other times you're just like, I need my gold. Cause like, nah, but like... As far as that whole perspective, the ultra, the greed ninja's way of doing shit, the ultra aggressive, ultra greed shit is, if you still have health and mana, do something to help the fight out, right? Don't run away. Like, yeah. If you have health and mana, you should be using it to fucking help us win, mm -hmm. right? Don't fucking run away. Don't. And also, even if you like, if you're running away, right, and you're guaranteed gonna die, go down fighting. Right? Yeah, that's right, why every time when I'm running away with Hino, you'll see me fucking throw back fucking spears. Because I know I'm going to catch somebody with these spears. Somebody and sometimes does. it turns into a turnaround where I'm like, oh, I hit them? Mm -hmm. And they're running into it and I got their whole team? And now I've been holding it down for a little bit and I've been catching them with a few? Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody's here and we blowing them up. Yeah, and, I, and that's the thing too because it's like I'll do the turnaround or I'll be running I'm like, oh! And it's like, all right, I know I'm going to die. Let me turn around and hit these niggas with everything I have. Everything, yeah. Because the team's going to be here in two seconds. I'm not going to survive, but I, divine retribution's on the way type shit. No, but you sometimes I, mean? I have those, I'm not going to survive moments, I'll turn around, and you still end up surviving because your team came through. And then all you need to do is use an ability or two to get that lifesteal, and then you survive the encounter. Remember when Remember we were playing against that one day, uh, damn way, and I was Ho-Yi, and yeah. you were like, oh shit, I'm about to die, this nigga's on me. Yeah. And I turned around, and I came right back to the top, yeah. like, was that enough hope? And we fucking ended the game we off that shit? We ended the game off that. Yeah. Do we keep mentioning Deion Wade? Because right now he's been a top level. Like, he's a low tier and a high tier menace right now. Like, I feel like he's. Well, we've seen the best. In, here's the thing we haven't really lost to a Deion Wade, but every. Most games, except for the last one we've been in, whether it's the Deion Wade on our team or the other team, they have been a menace in the game. For the first 10 to 15 minutes. For the first 10 to 15 minutes. And what minutes, ends up yeah. happening normally is, like, Deion Wade's team fight is atrocious. Yeah. Like, he can't, he can't... But he can solo them. niggas. Which doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. sense. He can like, solo when, beast niggas, but like... When, he, when he's cleaving and hitting three and four niggas at a time, you're like, okay, isn't he stacking all of that damage? But it's like, no, because everybody just blows him up. But if he's in a 1v1 situation, I think up to 1v3, maybe even 1v4. Like, if you have a fed Deion you know Wade... What I, you know what I like? What I've seen from a lot of Deion Wade's I like? The finish capacity from the real hungry ones. You know what I'm talking the about? Niggas chasing. Where they, where they, <laughs> that's a problem, though, at the same time. No, because I've seen people... you just seen the axe murderer running through I, the fucking jungle I've seen people, shit. like, where we're holding towards, like, when they're pushing down, like, high, high, ground, high ground tower, right? It'll be like, we're out there, fucking them up, a couple people on our team die, 
but we're waiting for our damn way to come back. And the reason why we're fighting at the high ground is because we don't want them to push for game. Yeah. And like we fuck them up, and it's at that point where it's like, hey. damn, if we had a little bit more damage, then Dan Wade comes Spons out the portal. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Hey, 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 he's using his, uh, uh, the movement ability. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, jumping. Uh, da, 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 da. Straight murder niggas. And he finished, and I'm talking about triple kill Dan Wade. Bro, I like, was finna say, bro, Deion Wade lives for the announcer. It's like, it's like, in my head, it's like Thanos loving Lady Death, dog. He's just like, I'm only here to send niggas to death, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Because Deion Wade, but bro. But still be like, losing games. Bro. Which is the most retarded thing. Deion Wade will drop a quadra kill and then go and lose the match for you in the next push. Which it's like, they didn't get any gold. What happened? Right. You know what I'm saying? And like, I've seen... No, I remember I remember we were playing because you were low-key about to get tilted in the game. We were playing against the damn way that was going off on us. You were like, oh, who is he? He's in the jungle. He's just murking people. He just killed like two or three people. What the fuck is happening? Bro. Then we turn the fucking game around. Super simple. A bunch of team fights. We murk him. He comes out, does his cleanup action a couple of times. Yeah. But I come out, clean him up. Because now your magic damage is now, fucking yeah, smacking yeah. him. And I got the and life I, still. I think that's what I realized too. It's that he's weak to uh, mages. It's not even that ADCs. ADCs fuck him up. Uh... I mean, he gets he fucks up ADCs if he can touch them. Yeah, he can catch. That's the problem. Mages, he can catch ADCs. Mages, however, he can catch a mage, but mage, it's like he has negative fucking magic damage or yeah. something. Where it's like he takes extra magic damage when he gets hit with shit. Cause I've seen, like, I've seen an Angela start her ultimate and he's just dead. Where yeah. it's like you know most niggas can take at least like a second or two. Yeah, I've seen Dion Wade get hit with that bitch and it's just he's dead. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I guess there is that balancing factor. And then that's how the devs kind of built him to be balanced. Where it's like, okay, this nigga's going to no, be No, because I remember you even, said, you even said, what's going on with this nigga? He's two levels above us with more gold and he has less kills than we do. <laughs> Bro, it didn't make no sense. And I, okay, I get it. He's probably like a very good, like, beginner. Like, I think what Ho he is to ADC players is what Dion Wei is to junglers, right? Where it's like, no matter what point in the game this character's in, he's going to be probably the best farmer in his fucking category. So that's always going to keep him relevant. I and still feel like the more gonna... dangerous jungler is Augren, though. I agree. Because Augren can I kill teams. Hardly. I agree Augren just, can kill teams. I just think Augren takes more... You have to be a smarter player to play with Augren than you do with Dion. Yeah, it takes a little bit more touch. Because like with, with Dion, with, with Augren, it's like, oh shit... They killed the nigga that has a whole bunch of 80s, like a whole bunch of attack speed and shit. Yeah. And now that's Augren's shadow. So now that nigga's build is low-key playing against you guys. Yeah. Versus like Deion Way is just like, he's just a menace. Like he's yeah. just a straight fucking menace. Like, But why is he not effective in team fights? I don't know. And low-key, I want to read his kit real quick to see what the fuck, like, what's the Deion Way problem? Because it's like, okay, if you have, Deion Way plays like Butterfly, but like, Butterfly doesn't fall off in the game like he does. No. You know what I'm saying? Butterfly stays relevant. I think, okay, yeah, I get it. Her passive allows her cooldowns to be non-existent. But then it's like, I don't, I, it's, 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 you, it's unexplainable, really. I'm, I'm literally about to open the game to check that shit out right now. You know who's one stacks. character that pissed me off that somebody else was good with it? Ooh. Like, like whenever somebody else plays this bitch, yeah, like they, like it's, she seems really good, but when I play her, it's like she seems like not, it's like so horrible and not hard that to good. use. Not even hard to use. She just don't have the same impact. Charlotte, that bro. bro. I seen people like I've been in lane as a tank up against Charlotte's, and it's like, damn, you eating me all that health gain, all that fucking, all that star, the star signal strike, and all that you're, shit. And you're using Charlotte, and you're just like, <laughs> this does nothing. You're just this like, does where, where does this damage come from that this nigga was this doing, was doing earlier. earlier? I was so excited, like, yo, I need this SNK character. And I was just like, <laughs> I was using her on my free hero trial. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? I'm like, nigga, because I was using her in jungle. And I was like, nigga, she ain't even good at that. And she can do both. And I'm like, dog. But when you, so I played against her with like a Dun. I played against her with like a Hong Chi. Like, you know, that, that one nigga I used, a uh, new mm -hmm. tank. But like, like, it's like, I don't, I don't get it. I, I feel like this. I feel like some niggas get offline builds that are not available like, like and I, you know how we do mtg where it's like we go look up builds for characters to mm -hmm. see if they're better i feel like niggas are going on the websites using builds that are, aren't currently in the game quote unquote where mm -hmm. we're using all the preset builds i even feel like for some of the characters the pros like put out builds that are bad on purpose and don't complete items in order to like really fuck you up because it's like you don't know about what you're supposed to do to finish an item mm -hmm. there have been games where i'm playing with a full build that pro use and i'm like why do i have a level one item still and i'm like 
15k gold into the game. Let me finish this item. You know what I'm saying? Whereas a pro can go finish that item and make that build work. I'm just like, okay, whatever works in the moment to go ahead and get the most out of my gold. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But I feel like that's the case too in certain cases where it's like niggas are using builds that are custom to custom. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like they've done the math on what they're doing and how it works and it's not one of the preset builds from pro or uh, uh or hot or hot, hot, hot builds you know what i'm saying yeah because like in my opinion with hot builds like does the game automatically put the hot builds into the system because i'm over here just like niggas really out here playing 30k worth of games on this character mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and then how often are they like updating these and like what does how often are they resetting this so we can know how often this build has been changed or potentially used? Because right. I'll be looking at items like, I've seen builds like have a 75% win rate, but it won't say anything about how often it's been used. And another build will be like, 46,000 uses, 54% win rate. Now, the 54% win rate sounds very realistic, but like, right. what the fuck is about this 76% one? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then what are the stats on this? Like, I feel like it's another thing. This game's pretty inconsistent when it comes to telling you about the stats. But here's DM Way real quick. We can read them. Here's his passive. All skills can cleanse tile control. I did not know that. That's why he'd be going off. Because it's like you stun him and Can't he's stop like, him. fuck that. Yeah. I just use a skill. Fuck you. <laughs> Each successful cleanse boosts his physical and range Oh, niggas play him wrong. That's why. I didn't know that's how you use him. You're supposed to wait for niggas to do shit to you so that yeah. you can then, like, cleanse it and extend your range. Yeah. Because, like, uh, a physical attacking nigga that gets boosted range off of six progressive ability uses doesn't even sound right. That sounds ridiculous. You imagine, like, all right, you got five tiles worth of damage, but now because like you cleanse six that times, you should got low key, thirty tiles. That means low key. If I was a, if I was done, yeah. or if I was, if I was down way, mm -hmm. before level four, I'm coming for Angela all day. Use that, all use that day. slow motion on me. All use that slow motion. That. I'm about to eat Bro, that to the I'm face. About to I'm about to run up. into you and just eat that. Cleanse. And just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, what's the next ability? All right, ability one. Gains a movement speed. This is the this is the axe murderer stance. Gains movement speed and enhances the next basic attack to deal extra damage. I know he has something that does true damage too. Deals damage and slows enemies within a certain range around him. Hitting enemies enhances him. While enhanced, the other way gains an attack speed and bonus and a life steal effect. Okay, insane as well. And then. Leaps towards a target enemy, dealing damage and slowing them. Enhances himself, dealing extra damage to enemies while enhanced. And that extra damage is enhanced in white, so that's where his true damage comes from. His okay, ultimate. got it. Because this is this is green, yellow. That's yeah, orange red. is physical, right? Orange is physical damage. Yeah. I think purple is uh, magic. magic and white is true. And, you know, his ultimate. Here's a video for it very clearly. Bow, and then there you go. The white stacks that's his ulti with the da 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 da. -da. And then, technically, I think this does fucking true damage too, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. No, it's extra physical damage. Just extra physical. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Who else are we talking about? This guy who seems broken. Who seems broken? Yeah. Uh, shit, I don't know. So, I was gonna look, okay. So, here's what I know he's broken, but he's not obviously broken. He's a skill guy. They just gave, uh, uh, the, the, sh What's that? Go they gave the Gojo skin to Kong and he. Mm -hmm. Now, Gojo's known as the most powerful sorcerer in JJK, right? So that means, and I, I didn't know this, but Kong Ming's S tier. And I used to use Kong Ming, and I thought he was trash. They must have changed him or something. Or maybe I was just not using him that well. But giving a nigga the color purple skin means that he has to be pretty decent, right? Or right, giving the Gojo skin means he has to be pretty decent. And I only say that because, like, nigga, you gotta be some top rank nigga in order to use some top rank shit. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. Where, where, where is Kong Ming at? I thought I owned him. Because I wanted to check his abilities out real quick in order to just see how those scale and to see why he's considered S tier. Oh, that's why. I have him in his little fucking gay ass costume. Alright, here's his passive. Active skills hit on enemies grant one stack at the max of five stacks. He summons a prism to attack enemies. I'm familiar with that about that ability. That's pretty much that shit where it's like he has those extra orbs that float around him and yeah. they go pew, 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 pew. Yeah, that shit. All right. Fires three prisms in a cone-shaped area, dealing damage to enemies hit. That's his first ability. What does that scale with magic, though? How much magic damage does it do? Doesn't necessarily say what the percentages are. That's stupid. Let's go details. There we go. Alright, so it goes 500 plus 80% magical on that. 
And then his second ability, Time Shift, does is he teleports to a certain area, then he deals 350 plus 52 percent magical damage. Then enemies take damage twice that take damage twice from the skill have their movement speed reduced by 90 percent. That's wild. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. And he can stock up three charges of this ability to teleport. And here's the last one: winning strategy. Kongming targets an enemy and starts channeling a magic a spirit bomb. Which deals 450, a hey, they might get sued. <laughs> well, 450 plus 55% magical damage to non-hero enemy units that are targeted or in the spirit bomb's path will take extra damage and be launched for 0.5 seconds. Enemies take 2% extra damage from spirit bomb for every 1% HP lost. When a spirit bomb hits it, defeats an enemy, Kongmin gains a full stack of marks and this skill's, redu uh, this skill's time is reduced by 80%. If a target enemy hero is defeated while the spirit bomb is being channeled, the, the time of the skill will be reduced by 80%. What's the cooldown on this? It's 80% of 25, Brian. 80% like, of 25? Yeah. It's like... It's like, what, like, like, uh... 20? 22? No, 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 no. 20% is... Or, 80% mm -hmm. of, is like... Uh... 16, 17? So I, so I, maybe 80, 18? So 80% on 25 would be like a, like a 19 seconds, you think? You put in there like a 6 down, second cooldown maybe? Hmm? No, I'm trying to do the math on it. It's the cooldown for his ability. So it may be like, so that would probably reduce to like 6 seconds? 80% of a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But then also, seeing how these this magic damage stacks, that's how you get your builds and shit, right? Because I'm not the type of nigga to sit here and do the math, but now that we're actually kind of going in-depth, like, low-key, I want to go in and do the math. Because, like, through the prep, you can do a build, right? And then you can just go ahead and be like, alright, boom, going with that stacking ability. Like, he stacks passives, and obviously you want the cooldown. But how much low. different is it going to be then? Look, I can look at these and tell you they're not that much different than what you have for... Um, even high no. Mm -hmm. The only thing he doesn't have is life steal on here. Mm -hmm. And that's you switch out. No, oh, he does have life steal. He doesn't have the health gain from. That's why he's missing the uh, health gain, and it looks like uh, this is a jungle item. This is jungle build. Oh, this is jungle build. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause like, he high no doesn't use the scepter of reverberation, but like he uses the auger's word. Yeah, these are all just raw magical attack. These are all just add raw magical attack. Maybe building something on him with like magic attack plus magic pierce. Probably be the way to go on him. Probably just build magic attack. Because then let me see, uh, what's the other build he has? Because these aren't builds that I built at all. These are the pre-made ones. Yeah, it looks like they're just trying to maximize magic attack with a little bit of cooldown. Okay. So I'm hot, they got him with this, and that's this jungle build too. Only difference is they threw in the Void Staff and Savant's Wrath. Or, uh, that's closer to a like what Hino or a mid. Yeah, see? Look. So, um, most mid use Void Staff and uh, Savant's Wrath. And that's just to go ahead and get the most out of their magic damage, right? Yeah. See, this is for cooldown reduction and the immunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like one of those uh, like crystal time effects where you turn into a crystal and you, you're immune. You mm -hmm. don't take damage, but you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. But yeah, it just looks like it looks like magic damage. But like, there, there's only so many ways with how they set up characters. There's only like we talked about before. There's only there's so many ways to really them. build them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you kind of just do what you get. You don't throw a fit, my guy. That's just how that.